Hi everyone, so last night I had a really late night and I had a few drinks, I went to a big party, it was the Fashion Awards in London and it turned into a bit of a late night and this morning I thought I really want to make a video today, a YouTube video and I thought I could do kind of a morning after and I was like hold on a minute, that was my first ever video that I did so it made me want to re-watch my first ever video and see what I did then, if I would change anything, what are the products that I would use now that I didn't use then. Um, yeah, and just kind of revisit my first ever video. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. So it was 13 years ago, this video, so I'm completely shocked to see that. I thought it was gonna be like 11 years ago, just over 10, but 13, that was a shock. So I'm gonna watch this video. The night before makeover. So. Hi everyone, oh hold on a minute, I need to get back to the Hi everyone, this is my morning after the night before makeover. The sound is terrible on it. Yeah, I remember because I used the, um, I used to use the sound in the camera, that's why. Now, oh, cute I was though. out last night, so I thought this young. was a great day to do this video. Very baby face. I have very dehydrated skin, it's blotchy, some spots coming <laughs> up, my lips are incredibly dry and I managed to bite into one of them last night and seemed to have a kind of Nothing bit of skin hanging there. off Lips there. Are still so really dry. I'm sure you've all been there. <laughs> it's one of those days when you wish you could just stay in bed all day, but I'm gonna show you how My to look fantastic. My hair is fantastic. so dark. Now, the first thing you need to do is hopefully you took all your makeup off last night before you went to bed. If you didn't, you really need to do it now. So properly cleanse twice. So totally agree with all of that. If you have slept in your makeup or you've slept in some of your makeup the night before, then you do need to address that first thing and remove. I mean, I took all of my makeup off last night, I must admit. I have to. I can't sleep if I've got makeup on. I really feel like, yeah. I have to get my makeup off before I sleep. It's the it, it's essential. So if you didn't do that, then she's right. You have to get all your makeup off now. I am saying do a double cleanse there. Now I do a single cleanse with my own cleanser, but I'm gonna do what I would do now, which hasn't really changed actually, but if I was to, had woken up this morning and still had remnants of last night's makeup then i would want to really cleanse all of everything off and i would give myself a nice little massage at the same time so i'd be wanting to really just help with that puffiness do lots of sort of circles around the eyes i'd want to kind of wake up my lymph system i'm not going to do a full-on face massage now i will link to my full face massage but um anything like this even if you're not kind of professionally trained or you haven't got a video to watch just moving your hands around your face as long as it's not pulling and it's gliding over the um, cleanser then anything like this is great obviously down the neck as well I'm actually going to leave this on because my cleanser is a mask as well and it's really plumping and hydrating so I'm going to leave this on for probably 10 minutes five to ten minutes and then um, I'm going to remove it and I will be back to watch the next bit of my 13 year old video. I also put some of these in the fridge last night. So the next thing I'm talking about is cold and that I stand by today and absolutely 100%. In fact, I remember, I think at the time I did have some cold tools and things but they were more difficult to get. I bought them in Japan and I remember when I was making this video thinking what's easy for somebody that you mean you couldn't buy all of this stuff so it wasn't so accessible so what I'm doing in this video is actually I say that I've left some cold pads wet them and left them in the fridge overnight which actually would still work and would still be great but as we know you can buy all kinds of cold tools now. They're so easy to buy on Amazon or everywhere. The whole beauty world, I guess, has completely opened up since 13 years ago. So yeah, so the next thing I would do is to apply something like a, um, well, you can either get some kind of an eye tool, if you, especially if you're puffy around the eyes. And I feel like you just have to spend quite a lot of time on the skin care and probably less time on your makeup when you've had a big night out 
because it's the skincare and these little details that's going to make the difference. So some kind of a serum, particularly one that has caffeine in, that you use around your eyes is absolutely brilliant. And then anything that's cold, you could DIY it, you could do some um, green tea ice cubes, just make them yourself. So make green tea, let it brew really strong, leave it to cool down, pour it into ice cubes and then freeze it. And then if you just wrap them in a little cloth, you could do exactly what I'm doing now, all around your eyes, but do it with um, with your ice cubes. Or, as, as we know, there's every type of massage tool available to all of us now. So yeah, anything cold, obviously it's great as well. If I put some, um, this would have been better to do when I had my mask on, my cleanser mask, but it's really good to do along the jawline as well, so. Oh, just give that sort of nice cold therapy, cryotherapy all over the face. And then good for sort of lifting as well. So lifting contours, lifting up sort of cheeks. Also really good. And apart from that, it just feels really nice. If you're feeling hungover, you're feeling tired or you're just generally just a bit puffy. Maybe you had a meal the night before that was just really, really salty and you just feel like, oh, I don't feel right. Then just spending even a minute, a couple of minutes with something cold, whatever it is, is absolutely gonna work. So I just wanna Anything see what else cold I said. Anything cold is gonna get rid of puffiness. Now, if you've got one of those gel masks during the season when you're going out a lot, make sure you keep it in the fridge because if you can just even have a minute of something cold over the eyes, it really does reduce puffiness. Another really good thing to use is eye gel and this is YSX, reduce puffiness. Keep this in the fridge as well. So another thing I mentioned there is gel pads for under the eyes and how it's great to keep them in the fridge. Pop them on in the morning, freshen everything up so that is still, I still 100% stand behind that. A minute of something cold over the eyes, it really does reduce puffiness. Oh, I also say Another just really good thing to use is eye gel, and this minute. is YSX, reduce puffiness. Keep this in the fridge as well, and just pat it on because anything that has a patting action is going to help to reduce the puffiness. So, using your ring finger, just really pat that on and work going outwards, just gently patting. And what it does, it just gets rid of all the buildup of lymph, just gets your lymphatic drainage oh, going. She's good, she's good. And just sort of push it out. 100% nice still stand by this. It's gonna feel really, really good, and it does. So yeah, so what I'm saying now, here is just to lips. keep all your products in, in the fridge as well for the morning after, so good. Mine are quite raggedy today. I'm going to use some Lisa Hoffman Spa Facial Lip Moisturiser. You can use Vaseline. So I'm saying at this stage to put on lip balm as well. And I also said Vaseline. Do you know what? I would retract that now. Re Vaseline is great. It's a barrier cream, but it's not really good for actually moisturising. So that I'm changing my mind on. But if you haven't got anything else, that's fine but just to moisturize your lips. I would also add here, I don't know if I say anything about removing the dryness. You can use anything, but I quite like this one. I've really got into it. I'm just gonna put a small amount on with a Q-tip and I'm just gonna use that. Ah, okay, yeah. Sort of I was hoping I was gonna do that. Gently. I'm exfoliating. Just got a gentle way of doing it. And you can use anything. You can use Vaseline, you can use... Okay, so I'm using it as a I'm glad I did that because that's what I was going to say. I would still want to do some kind of exfoliation, whether it's with my cleanser. When I'm cleansing, I use my cleansing cloth, which I find the best thing for exfoliating lips, actually, especially if they're feeling really dry, to, as you're removing with the wet, um, either the slightly exfoliating side or the softer side, just to really kind of use that to get any little bits of loose skin off. But this is absolutely a good way as well, just to really roll that um, Q-tip on there. Your normal lip balm for this. 
that's going to really moisturise them, but also it's just going to take off those loose bits of skin that feel horrible. I'm going to move along. Okay, next I'm going to use, I'm just going to give my skin a little spray. So next I'm suggesting a this mist. This is, um, again, quite a cold mist. It's just going to help to rehydrate my skin. Yep. Now, because my skin is naturally quite oily, although it's feeling incredibly dehydrated, I'm not going to put very heavy face cream on because I'll just end up looking... Okay, so yeah, so what I'm saying is that the next thing is to use your cream and for someone like me that isn't particularly dry, I'm not going to use a really heavy cream, even though I feel dehydrated but dehydration and dryness is kind of different, so I naturally don't have dry skin. And I think that's something to consider. If you just wake up and you feel like your skin is so dehydrated, but you're actually someone that has um, combination skin, then just ladening, ladening on thick cream is not necessarily gonna make you look good. It's just gonna make you look greasy. So I think good hydration um, in, in the form of water and drinking and of course moisturizer but that suits your skin type even though you're feeling drier than normal you're hydrated you're not necessarily it's not necessarily dry skin if that makes sense so i think again i'll agree with what i said there i'm going to use um this quite light all-in-one moisturizer and primer which is by ven and i really don't need a lot of this because again this is quite moisturizing so I put a very thin layer of this on. And I think what I'm getting from this video, I haven't watched this for years and years and years and years. In fact, I may not have watched it since I uploaded it 13 years ago. I don't think I have. And I'm agreeing with it, is that if you have been on a night out and you are feeling rough, I guess the inclination is to, if you're going somewhere, quickly just put on loads of makeup. Oh, I don't look good today, so I'm going to put on extra foundation or I'm going to... Um, put on extra makeup and try and cover this, cover how I'm feeling and cover how my skin is looking, when actually it's really about skincare first and really making your skin feel more hydrated, feel more plumped up, feel better, and actually that will in turn, you'll need less makeup. Your skin will look better, but you'll, you'll need less makeup. So it's not about just putting on extra makeup because that is not going to work especially if your skin is dehydrated if it's dry if it's looking flaky if your lips are all peeling no amount of lipstick is going to look good let's face it so this preparation work is absolutely key here so i'm going to listen to the next dehydrated bit dehydrated and greasy which i don't want to have oh, that's it i don't want Instead, dehydrated I'm and greasy use this oscar product and this has just arrived today and what you really want to be aiming to do, oh, that feels so nice. It feels really moisturizing, but quite refreshing. So I actually just used a serum. I didn't even use, um, my skin was probably a bit oilier then, a bit mm, 13 years ago. Maybe I'm a bit drier now. Could probably still get away with using a serum though. So onto the makeup. I'm gonna move the screen here. The so I've said that I'm going to use a only a few products and keep it very untechnical totally agree with that still. So one of the things I say is that if you're not used to wearing foundation then this is not the first day to start wearing it and if you do wear foundation this is not the day to put tons and tons of extra foundation on just because you think you're not looking great. Now that my skin feels really good and feels much more plumped up and moisturized going to just apply it here and there where I need it and you could do this with concealer, which I do say in that video, and I do stand by today. So I'm gonna use kind of what I would call my patch, I didn't call it my patchwork technique back then, but that's kind of what I'm saying, is just to use it where you need the foundation. So you're keeping the overall look very fresh. It's kind of like the makeup that's trending today, so I'm glad that 13 years ago I was already kind of there. I think it's just that my, I guess my aesthetic hasn't changed and the way I like to do makeup hasn't really changed since I started actually. So I'm just working it in around my nose and just use whatever you're, you usually use as foundation. 
So I'm kind of evening out more than anything. And the place that you even out in is always different to the next person. So just look in the mirror and if you feel like, oh, there's a bit of pigmentation around there, I'll put a bit there. Or if you've got some broken capillaries or some redness somewhere else, then again, just even out there too. I just need a little bit of evening out. So I'm just gonna use the 10 hour of sleep effect just in the areas where I need a little bit of evening out but I want it on as thin as I possibly can there's something about when you've been out and the next day your skin's really parched and dry and you feel groggy putting more foundation on than usual actually makes your skin look a hell of a lot worse it just doesn't sit right so just use the minimum you right. get away with I'm using fingers so I'm making sure I'm not piling it on. This is all you need. So I'm just going to use it down the centre of my face. Okay. Oh wow, it's now saying end of part one and I remember when I started YouTube, of course I was brand new to it and you had, I think you needed back then 10,000 or more than 10,000 subscribers to be able to upload more than 10 minutes at a time. So I've obviously run out of time with this look and I'm having to put it up in two parts. So I've always <laughs> liked long videos. I've always been able to chat, chat, chat. And back then I actually had to do it in two parts until I had enough subscribers. So that's, this is real vintage YouTube here. Okay, morning after okay. makeup part two. To the next step. See, I didn't even say this is I'm part two because when I filmed it, I had no idea that I wouldn't be able to upload it in one go. Um, so there's no mention, we're just so straight into part two. Concealer. We're going on to we're under eye concealer and I'm using, I think a product that doesn't exist anymore, it's a benefit one. So instead I'm going to use this NARS one. And knowing me, I wouldn't have used it in the big triangle effect, the YouTube style. I would have just used it here and there. part of this little kit that I've got here, which I'm also gonna use under my eyebrows. And I'm just gonna look in the mirror and see exactly where I am ah, dark. See, look in the mirror and see exactly where I am dark. You can use fingers actually. So I'm just it's using doing it in the inner corner brushes for it and just put it exactly where you need it exactly where you need it underneath the area where you're dark because oh. what it'll do it'll lighten up that area and lighten up the shadows and they'll just cancel each other out you won't look any any better you that's true the corners there and then the see, corners away. if you get it in the right place i.e just where i'm you're saying dark, if you get it in the right place just, just where you're dark it instantly you brightens and use the other eye as well. Completely agree with that. Right so it is about not ladening on too much to product again. Brushes are good. Because if you're feeling tired and you're already looking dry under the eyes. Don't ever go overboard with these types of products. You end up looking quite spooky. Because you're much lighter <laughs> underneath the eyes. You look a bit alien. Just enough to lift. So using my own advice, just enough to lift. Okay, so I've just watched the next bit and guess what? I use Laura Mercier Secret Camouflage to pinpoint conceal my face. So nothing's changed. You cannot teach an old dog new tricks and I have not changed my technique at all. I still stand by it. Now it's trending and uh, it took that long for everyone else to catch on. But yes, so we're just gonna be doing nice bit of pinpoint concealing a la 13 years ago and this is also fantastic anyway if your skin's all hydrated and you just want a fresh look for the day after a big night worth taking your time with this just focusing in on any little marks obviously if i do some blush i'll come back and pinpoint again afterwards and yeah, I've just done this since the beginning of my career. It's how I like to do skin and it hasn't changed. So that's kind of almost 30 years of pinpoint concealing. So the next thing I'm doing is cream blush. And I describe how I'm using cream because my face is feeling dehydrated and how it's powders can be a little bit drier. 
actually, 13 years later, the powder technology has shifted quite a lot. So you can get powders which are much creamier now. So that has changed, I'd say. Having said that, I would still swear by cream blush if you want that really dewy, natural effect. Blushing within, as I called it back then, and I would still call it today. What I will do differently is I'm going to mix a little bit of liquid highlighter. This is my favourite kind of go-to if I just need a little lift with blush. So I'm just going to use actually um, lipstick. So I'm going to mix one of my lipsticks, more of a pinky shade, with a touch of liquid highlighter and just apply that onto the apples of my cheeks in a way that just looks really, really natural. Or you could do it with bronzer. If you want to do bronzer, you could do a cream bronze, whatever it is that you usually do. And then just pat that into place. So it almost feels like it's connecting with the skin and becoming one. It's the sort of thing that when you've been out the night before and then you go to meet people for lunch the next day and you're like, oh, so tired, I just haven't put any makeup on. And they just think, you can't, they can't see that you've got any makeup on, but you obviously got very, very clever, no makeup makeup on. And, um, you know, you're looking absolutely glowing. So just really patting that into the skin, keeping it natural. If you then wanted to add some bronzer, I'll show you how I'll do that as well. But if you just want to keep it really, really simple, like a real simple no makeup makeup, then a touch of br blush and highlight is kind of all you need. So I'm just going to go back in with my concealer and a touch of my highlighter and blush mix. This is not in my video from 13 years ago. It's something that I probably would have done, but maybe felt it was a bit, I don't know, maybe a bit pro at the time with YouTube being in its infancy. And I guess most people weren't as good as at doing their makeup as they are now. It's incredible how YouTube has really lifted the skill of the average makeup wearer, like you wouldn't believe which is great. That's one of the reasons I got into it. I really wanted to share knowledge and, and teach people how to become their own makeup artist. And hopefully, I do get stopped a lot in the street and people come up to me and say, oh, I learned to do my makeup from you. And, you know, I remember watching your YouTube tutorials and learning everything that I needed to know. And even makeup artists come up and say that to me, which is so nice. I always feel really proud of that. So I'm just, I don't think I had these actually. These are kind of a little bit of sun damage that if I do use cream blush now, I do need to even out afterwards. So maybe it's just that my face has changed. Okay, next I'm gonna use powder just around the center of my face. I haven't actually watched the next bit of the video yet, but I can see that I just need to set a little bit around just the center of my face. I'm going to use a really small brush so that I'm not getting all powdery and just really knocking back that shine in areas where it's needed. Not mattifying my face but just taking back any shine that doesn't look good. So let's see what's That's happening next. <laughs> Next, on to the eyes. I think that after a big night out, the last thing you want to do is spend time trying to blend eyeshadows on. So I like to use so cream This eyeshadows. is a good point. I'm going to use groundwork. Ah, matte. groundwork. That is still in my kit. Oh my God, I'm going to use exactly that now. This is, this is hilarious. Okay, so what I'm sort of saying there is that if you're extremely tired, you might not want to do a big eye look, and I get it, and I still feel that way now. And... In the video, I use groundwork because I'm kind of saying that it's quite nice to use a cream eyeshadow, something that's close to your natural skin tone, maybe just a little bit deeper than your natural skin tone that will give you a little bit of definition, feel quite nice because it's creamy, but also set so it doesn't go anywhere once it's on and will take you about a minute to use. So I concur with all of that. 
and I think that's still really, really good advice. You could use a brush if you wanted to sculpt a little bit more with it, which I think I will actually. Wow, I nearly went full nostalgia there and used a very old 217, MAC 217, which would have been fine, but it was a really um, one with not many hairs left on it. So I'm just going to take that up to my socket line a little bit more and just lift. Just blending. I'm also going to go with the same exact paint pot. I th think they still sell this now. I've obviously got it in my kit so I must have bought it not that long ago but let's hope they haven't discontinued it. It's a good colour, really good colour, especially on me. It's just the right amount of depth and they used to do a really good selection of kind of skin tone shades which hopefully they still do. So I'm actually just going in with my foundation, just the tiniest amount. I often use my foundation just to blend edges. So even cream eyeshadows, cream blush, anything, there's nothing this foundation cannot blend. Another one which is quite nice is number seven's Eye Mousse in Vanilla. This one has more of a shimmer, it's a little mm. bit paler. Mm. But you can always just put a little bit okay. in the corners. So I'm I'm using another cream eyeshadow, a very light pearly one, just at the inner corner. I'm actually going to use highlighter. Do you know back then there weren't the amount of highlighters? If you think about it, face highlighters were very glittery. I mean, Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector was the first one that actually looked like skin, and I used to use it a lot in my early YouTube days because it was the probably the only one back then that didn't look sort of metallic-y on the skin. But now, I mean, obviously you can get so many great highlighters that look so natural. So I'm actually going to use just a bit of elevated glow at the inner corner. And then I just want to see what I'm saying about there, that. And it'll just give you a nice wide-eyed look. Yeah. I'm I saying... think up for the morning after is all about looking wide-eyed, bright. <laughs> and eyes wide open so we don't want to use any dark cold pencils or anything too heavy that's going to so great i'm talking about like just keeping the eyes wide open your eyes are a little bit tired they're a little bit scrunchy maybe a bit red so anything that brightens um is perfect and um, that's exactly what i'm saying there so i'm just going to put the highlighter and just keep it really simple like that. Now you can use this underneath as well if you want to. You can go. Oh my god, this is just, crazy! So um, I'm using the groundwork lining. underneath as well, which I already have you done. I just am doing things yeah, exactly really the same. Like this makeup. is hilarious. It's, gonna it's not going to look like natural. makeup. Just going to look natural. Okay, I'm going to yeah. use for the eyelashes. I'm going to use eyelash curlers. Eyelash These curlers. Yep. Yeah. Essential if you've had a night out. Unless totally you're lucky agree. enough to have very really curly eyelashes. I'd say these are essential for every day now. I was saying for an, after a night out then. I'm not. Mine are completely straight. Still are. And when I curl my eyelashes, it makes not only my eyes look completely wide awake, but it makes me feel wide awake, if you can see the difference there. It just instantly lifts them. On to mascara. I'm using um, Max Volume Flash by... So I'm using mascara now. It was a Rimmel one then. Here I'm using this one, Tarantula Lash, which is made by a friend of mine, a makeup artist called Joe Baker. And this is a really nice kind of volumizing one. So this is gonna be, make me look wide awake. And I'm giving them a brush through. What I actually say in the video is that I'm not going to do too much mascara. I want the whole look to be fresh. It's a new day. It's a new morning. And I agree with that. And I also say I wore so much mascara last night that I'm over it. So yeah, so we're just brushing through, keeping the mascara nice and clean. And then the next section... Some eyebrows. I don't think you can have time. If you've got time, you can always put a little bit of powder in them or if they're pretty good, just leave them. So I'm just talking about my brows here and it's funny that um, I want to almost talk about myself in the third person because this is so weird and nostalgic. I'm always want to say she's saying. Um, 
but she I'm saying that um, if they're good just brush them through and don't worry about them or if you've got a bit of time fill them in slightly and I think you know that's definitely almost where we're getting to again now but back then there wasn't anywhere near as many brow products as there are now you could fill them in there was pencils obviously some of the brow pens you could only buy from japanese suppliers i know i used to use the suki one very much in my early youtube days since then there's been like brow hysteria and i think five years ago even though you know people wouldn't even leave the house until they've completely done their brows i think it is getting more relaxed again and i just quite like the way i said that you know just brush them through and if they're pretty good just leave them so i'm gonna do that if I did have any gaps, I'd say fill them in. And likewise, if you feel like you can't go out without filling in your brows, then do it. But I think the whole idea with this makeup look is really about effortless, not taking too long, not being too technical, and really focusing more on skin than anything else. Like if your skin looks good, if your eyes look bright, then that is a successful, to me, morning after makeup. So the next thing I do in the video is to apply an off-white pencil just through almost the center of the lower eye, just in case there's any redness there. Actually, in the video, I'm using a um, concealer pencil. There probably weren't as many of the off-white pencils for eyes back then. But you just wanna make sure you don't use too much of this because it can get rid of that really natural look that we've got going on. Just blend that in a little bit. Yeah, we want to keep the whole look looking really, really natural. So just a small amount. Otherwise, if they get too white and too bright, it just looks really artificial and suddenly the whole makeup look is ruined. So just a really tiny amount of this type of product does work really well. So onto the lip section and I'm using a number seven lip pencil that back then when I was the creative director of Boots, I had designed. So it's my favorite kind of everyday lip pencil. And really, yeah, I think when you're doing this kind of a look, you just want to get a little bit of definition in your lips because obviously you've got some definition in your eyes and you want to bring your lips to the forefront as well. So I'm going to use, and now the, the um, lip balm that I use at the beginning is really starting to sink in. So just take a lip pencil which works for you that's kind of a naturalish tone. and take it all over the lips. So this creates a nice stain on the lips, but also you can do a touch of shaping as well. So you don't wanna have any hard edges, but And then on top of that, I'm going to use, um, in the video I use a lip gloss, but I'm lucky that, because I've always had the driest lips going, I now have my own gloss embrace, which means that I've got a gloss that actually repairs your lips, and this is my absolute savior. Just on a day-to-day -day basis, when I want something on my lips, a little bit of color, a little bit of shine, but also something that is going to repair them and make them feel better. And it's great because it's got, it's occlusive, so it means it has natural oils and butters, so it's not silicones that are going to evaporate off. It's natural oils and butters that, even if the colour goes away, it does stay on the lips, the actual moisturisation and the nurturing healingness. So I think that kind of a lip is really good when you're just over makeup you wore loads of makeup last night you're not in the mood for it today but you just want to look really really fresh obviously if you're someone that always likes to wear bronzer or oh you know you can't go out the house without your eyeliner maybe just do a sort of toned down version of that um, i'm actually going to add a little bit of bronzer myself which isn't in the original video i'm going to use the bronze uh, a matte bronzer it's another thing that i think is really interesting about back then and now. I mean, to find a really good color selection of matte bronzers that weren't expensive 
was almost impossible. I mean, there was the Guerlain ones and they were good, but even they didn't have the breadth and the depth of shades that you can get now. So I'm just gonna do a light bronzer kind of round my top of my cheeks, forehead, a little bit on my neck. Again, I'm not gonna go too crazy, but that just brings the whole look together. So that's it, that's my fresh faced morning after makeup look circa 2023, as opposed to 2013. Would I change anything? How was it watching that video? It was really nostalgic and strange in some ways, but honestly, there's not much that I would change. There's a few updates in formulas, in products, but overall I feel like my philosophy has stayed exactly the same. So it is about thoughtful, thin layers of makeup, really good skin prep, really working. If you've got time, spend it on making your skin feel hydrated and moisturized, and then just thoughtful makeup, thin layers, and for maximum effect. Please let me know in the comments if you were around for that first um, video, let me know. And if you didn't see it, I'll put a link to it. And if you wanna, out of curiosity, if you wanna see baby Lisa, my big, big, big eyes and my um, cute little face, then please check it out. And yeah, I think this is a really good one, especially for over this, you know, this time of year, because I know that everyone is posting about party makeup looks, but no one's really posting about the next day. So I think this hopefully will be a really helpful one for you. Do let me know in the comments anyway, and I'll see you soon. Lots of love. Bye.